Hi. <laughs> okay, um, so first of all, <laughs> I'm sure you can probably hear it. Yeah, I have my old system. And, um, we're working on it. <laughs> so, I thought that I would talk about, um, the Marx Brothers. Because I don't think... In fact, I know I didn't. I mentioned the um, the record set, and um, in fact, I think I mentioned Groucho once another time. So we're going to talk about these brothers. <laughs> they um, And, and I highly recommend, because I'm not going to go into full detail because it'll just take too long. There is, I think it was on PBS, and you can find it on YouTube because I've watched it again. <laughs> I was in high school when it was first released. Um, and it was released, I think, on Groucho's 100th birthday. And... Um, it was about the Marx Brothers. It was supposed to be mainly about Groucho, but of course, when you talk about Groucho, you're talking about all of them. <laughs> and of course, he talks about when they, why they got all of their nicknames and everything like that. So I'm not gonna go into detail about that because you can find some of those. Um, and I think Biography did. And, and everything like that. So uh, you can find a whole bunch of those documentaries that, <laughs> and, and I do warn you that if it's just about Groucho, you're going to get about all the brothers. <laughs> um, they were one of the most famous groups in entertainment. And when I say entertainment, it wasn't just Hollywood. Um, and you know, to be honest, when I'm looking at their filmography, I thought they did a lot more than it's showing. Um, I really did. I thought that they did tons of, of course, everyone knows Duck Soup. That's one of my favorites. I have and I highly recommend you pick this up. I think Target still has it. That's where I got it. And, uh, anyway, there's this one. It has, um, the coconuts. I think that's the one I talked about. Where the coconuts was originally a silent film. And in this one, it's a, it's a sound film. A talkie. Because <laughs> it's in 1929. Yeah, all talking, singing. It, it shows the original on the back. And, um, yeah, I think Coconuts is the one where they just transferred it over to a talking film. Like, word for word, line for line, everything. And, um, and then it has Animal Crackers, Monkey Business, Horse Feathers, and, of course, Duck Soup. So, but I haven't been sorry that I bought this. I saw it and was a little broke, but I was glad that I bought it. And, um, because I'm a big Marsh Brothers fan. So anyway, starting from the beginning, um, and we may get a few people that are a little upset because their parents, well, the, the mom especially, decided to use her kids so that she didn't have to work. You see that a lot. And if anybody, um, cause I, I've seen that in a lot of the documentaries, if it's been changed, please correct me. I have no problem with you doing that again. <laughs> I have no problem with that. And, um, And they were, let's see, their parents were Jewish immigrants. And 
And so anyway, the mom basically put them into entertainment. Now, their uncle, I believe, was already on stage, and that's kind of how they got their start. In fact, it was. And so they got all these stage names. And Well, so Chico, it has right here, Chico was actually Leonard. Harpo was um, Adolf, or actually Arthur, because it looks like his name was changed when they came over to the U.S. Uh, after... 1911, again, I'm sure that there's somebody who knows more and I have no problem with you <laughs> correcting me. <laughs> um, Groucho is, of course, Julius, and uh, Gummo was Milton, and Zeppo was Herbert. And again, like I said, please watch those documentaries because it's funny how they came up with their names. <laughs> Um, and, uh, they did have a couple of siblings that died in infancy. It says here, the firstborn son was born in 1886 and died in infancy. But it seems like there was another one. Um, so their musical talent was encouraged from an early age. Harpo was particularly talented, learning to play an estimated six different instruments. He was dedicated to the harp, which gave him his nickname. I mean, that one's pretty much given. <laughs> In every movie, he plays the harp at some point. Um, in fact, there is... We have... Oh, where did it go? Oh, goodness. <laughs> My room is kind of a mess right now. <laughs> I think I've shown these. Yeah. And uh, it has radio shows. And uh, there is one with, uh, yeah, it's called Conversation with Harpo. And it's got Bing Crosby and Jack Benny, Gary Cooper, and Ken Carpenter. It was in 1944. And uh, that's the only one that really, it has a uh, Harpo and he plays the harp as Bing Crosby sings. All the others have, ouch, have Chico and Groucho. And, um, but, yeah, they, they did all the vaudeville and everything with their uncle. I'm pretty sure it was an uncle. And, uh, yeah, Uncle Albert. And they were they would sing and do uh in, play instruments and everything. And that's one of the reasons why you see in their um movies them playing instruments. I think one of the greatest ones is in the coconuts. I think it's the coconuts where um Chico is playing Gypsy Love Song. I love that song. And um, I think I have a, a piece of it for the viola. And I play it every once in a while. Not so much now, because my bow needs to be fixed. And his uh, Groucho's debut was in 1905. He was a singer. By 1907, he and Gummo were singing together as the Three Nightingales with Mabel O'Donnell. And then Harpo became the fourth Nightingale. And then the troop became bigger. So by 1912, a performance at the Opera House in Texas was interrupted by shouts 
I run my mill. So basically, because of this mule that interrupted a show, Groucho made nasty remarks, but it made the audience laugh, and that kind of um, kick-started his persona <laughs> as Groucho. And then in World War One, um, four Marx Brothers started to bloom and develop their characters. With the help of their uncle. And <laughs> it's funny that, see, Groucho, it's funny how a lot, because he, um, it also explains in a lot of those biographies about the grease paint mustache. It's, yeah, it's not real. And there's a lot of people who think that it is real. <laughs> you can tell it's not real. <laughs> Spoiler, I know. <laughs> but there is reason for him wearing that because he didn't always and the story is actually pretty funny <laughs> so another reason to watch that and then uh harpo stopped speaking on stage and began to wear a red wig and carry a taxicab horn chico spoke with a fake italian accent um, developed offstage to deal with neighborhood toughs, while Zeppo adopted the role of the romantic. Um, but Chico, when you listen to them talk about Chico, he was kind of a rough and tough guy anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... kind of the the accent kind of just helped <laughs> uh, let's see the onstage personalities of Groucho, Chico, and Harpo were said to have been based on their actual traits Zeppo on the other hand was considered the funniest brother offstage okay so actually um, my great grandmother talked about the other brother, um, Gummo, because Zeppo ended up in the movies. Gummo started in the theater. I think he ended up in one movie. I don't remember. But my great-grandmother talked about how he went off to war. So maybe it was World War One, Maybe even mid World War Two. But he went off in the military, and then he kind of disappeared. <laughs> and she said, and I was really pissed, because I liked him. <laughs> like, great grandma. <laughs> but that was my flapper grandma. I mean, <laughs> you never knew it was going to come out of her mouth. And, um... So yeah, apparently he just he didn't enjoy and th and that happens, you know. And um so that talks about the stage names and then there's also I saw and this is um Because Harpo wrote a biography or memoir or something, and uh, he was 
um, promoting it. And it was on Good Day America, I think, way back when. And um, he just had those hosts in stitches. It was so much fun to watch them. I mean, it was him. And you have to understand that when he was doing that, he was very, very sick. But he was still doing his comedy act. So... But anyway, um, they also ended up in radio. So here they are. They did the vaudeville. They did Broadway. So now Motion Pictures is coming up. They also were in radio, like I said, with the with this. And um, and I don't know how much of their radio is on YouTube, but if you can ever find it. Or even if you can find... This is volume one. I know that there's another volume. I've tried to find it. And I'm sure that by now, because I grew up listening to this, I'm sure by now there's... Um, CD collections and everything. But they're a good laugh. So, um, yeah, Coconuts, I remember why, because there was the, um, Harpo was in the one, Too Many Kisses, I believe, and I saw that someone had posted that it's possible that one of the other brothers is in that movie as well, which I'm absolutely tickled that somebody was, <laughs> that somebody posted about that. Um, so... I'm I'm thankful that you posted about that cuz last I checked it was just him. So, um yeah, anytime you find information like that, don't hesitate to post. <laughs> so, yeah. Um And one of the things that somebody said in those biographies, and I don't remember who, because, like I said, this was back when I was in high school, so like the late 90s. Um, one of the things that someone said um, was that the greatest thing about their movies is you could tell that it was basically rehearsed for stage, so you could put it to stage so you you know you watch duck soup and they could transfer it over to a stage production and it would be just as funny you know you think about other movies like say princess bride and people are like oh no it's not gonna work well it really wouldn't but you watch like duck soup it would work because of the slapstick and, and everything else because they were raised in vaudeville and and everything just like with Buster Keaton and and some of those others that were raised in that. So, and and I agree because it was obvious that they rehearsed it, and a lot of the slapstick and a lot of the comedy that you see in those movies. And um, so. So yeah, there's the coconut. What does it say? Their first two released films, after an unreleased short silent film titled Humorist, were adaptions of Broadway shows The Coconuts and Animal Crackers. Okay, so I must have um, misunderstood. Dyslexia at its best. <laughs> I get to reading and get excited sometimes. So that's what it was. Um, These two films, The Coconuts and Animal Crackers, it sounds like were adaptions of their Broadway shows. Then Monkey Business and I'll Say She Is. I'll Say She Is apparently was never released. 
um, but there's bits and pieces of it that have been. You know, the um, reels you can see. Then horse feathers. Horse feathers is hilarious. It's got this whole routine on a football field. It's just funny as ever. And that's one. This is the amazing thing about the Marx Brothers is that in that movie, Groucho is supposed to be the dad to Zeppo. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> And he's a professor in this, and the and Zeppo is a student, and so it's all in a college, and it's just oh. And then duck soup, which if you've never seen it. I highly recommend you see it. it <laughs> start your journey on Marx Brothers comedy on that one. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Yeah, because um, the coconuts, it's okay. Um, you can obviously tell, because that one was released in 1929, and you get a lot of uh, music and dancing and, and everything, and they're running a hotel, kind of a shyster hotel. <laughs> but, yeah. And I haven't, I've wanted to see At the Circus, Go West, and The Big Store, I saw, I think it was Night in Casablanca. There was one I did see, and I'm pretty sure it was that one. No, no, no. Night at the Opera. It was that one. And that one was pretty good. And I do know that people are going to ask. Okay, because I know that Breaking Bad had Lydia. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, I was talking about Lydia the Tattoo Lady. Because I know that Breaking Bad made reference to that song. <laughs> I've never watched the show, but I do know about that. <laughs> um, it's in their film... At the Circus, um, 1939. Or you could just find the song. I did find it on YouTube where you can just listen to it. <laughs> it it's Groucho. Just usual Groucho. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, by the time 40s rolled around, because they actually weren't that young in, um, because you have to figure, if we look back here, yeah, they were born in, I mean, Chica was born in 1887, Harpo 88, Groucho 1890, and Gummo 1892, and then Zeppo in 1901. So. I mean, by the time they were making movies, they weren't young men. So, by the time the 40s rolled around, you know, late 30s and 40s, they, yeah, they, but you know, the one that still looked young <laughs> I well I guess <laughs> cuz he kept active was Groucho he did a radio show and it went into TV television was a uh, you bet your life 
And it's actually a lot of fun to watch. Because, um... I watched it because I've watched a few episodes out of curiosity and it's just as much fun to watch him heckle the um, contestants as it is for the contestants to get after him. <laughs> and basically it's, it's a kind of a quiz show. So they're asking questions and and then there's like a secret word and if they get a secret if they get the secret word they get like extra points or an extra $100 or I don't remember how much but it's actually a lot of fun and there have been there was one time where his mom was on the show and that was that was fun but by the 40s and 50s their health was declining and um It was, that had to be hard. They tried to do, and Groucho was the only one that actually did television. They, there was one of the, um, I don't remember, it was probably the PBS special that I saw, and they were supposed to do a TV series and you watch it and it doesn't make any sense it never aired and for good reason <laughs> but by that time chico was extremely sick and chico was pretty sick as well and um but yeah i mean when you watch the the segments that they show on this I'm pretty sure it was the PBS special. None of it really... You're watching it and you're like, what was the premises of it? I, I'm i not understanding. So, but... Anyway... Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll say she is. Was never released. Okay. Because it seems like it was on... Oh, that's right. So, with I'll say she is, because there are segments of it on stage, and it looks like it's being filmed for a movie with the Marx Brothers. Well, somebody picked it up, and, um, like, as recent as 2014, and you can see bits and pieces of their, um, of their version. So apparently they were able to pick it apart and get a stage production going. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. So yeah, I saw the um like, kind of trailer <laughs> for it. Um, I don't know where it went, how well it did or anything, if it went on tour or anything, but it looked like a lot of fun. So the filmography... So Humor Risk, it looks like it was... A Lost Film, then you got The Coconuts, Animal Crackers, The House That 
shadows built, which I have never heard before. Then monkey business, horse feathers, duck soup. There's only two of them that I've never seen. <laughs> it's just humor risk and house that shadows built. The other ones I've seen, and like I said, if you enjoy slapstick, all kinds of, and and some of it you also have to understand, <laughs> they were ahead of their time, and so there is some suggestive material in it. <laughs> so be prepared for that. One of the things that I absolutely oh, what was her name? Margaret Dumont. Groucho's chemistry with Ms. Dumont, and you see her in several Marx Brothers films. I mean, she was like the glue that held them together. She was wonderful. <laughs> they did one more. Groucho even said one time in an interview that they did one more stage production, I think in the 60s, and then she was gone. And he had so much respect for her. So, and you can tell that a lot of times he didn't really have that much respect for women, so that says a lot. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Night at the Opera I did see. That one's a fun one, because <laughs> I've seen the silent film, and I should re review that one. I, I should critique that one with uh, Buster Keaton, the um, opera one. And so this one was fun. And uh, I've seen parts of Day at the Races. I haven't seen Room Service. Like I said, At the Circus has the song, um, Lydia, but, um, I've been able to find it where you can, you don't have to look for the song. You can find the clip, actually, where they're singing it from the movie, and then you can also find, um, yeah, ignore that, where you can also... Um, find just the song clip. So, it is there, lurking around YouTube. <laughs> Go West, I've wanted to find. I, I can't seem to. and But, you know, I have heard that that's probably not, that it's not their best movie. It's like, because everyone was doing a Western they decided to do a Western. And um, I get that, because I watched uh, the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis that was a Western movie, and it, it was horrible. And I saw Abbott and Costello, they did a Western. It was terrible. So it's probably best that I don't see it, but I would love to see The Big Store. Um, Which it says here, intended to be their last film, but then it has like four other ones. <laughs> and then here are solo films. Um, Groucho did quite a few. He did Copacabana. Okay, Copacabana. I saw that film thinking that the other Marx Brothers were in it, but it was just Groucho and... Um, Oh, what is her name? Famous singer in Brazil. And I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. She's known for wearing the fruit bowl hats. <laughs> I can't believe it. She did a movie with, um, the, uh, with Dean and Jerry called Scared Stiff. Why am I 
Oh, I can click on it. What is her name? Carmen Miranda. I can't believe I forgot her name. Loser of the century. <laughs> the one time that I... <laughs> That one is actually a really sweet film. Um, you know, because in all the other movies that you see Groucho in, he's pulling all kinds of antics everywhere and being kind of a shy and all this. That one was actually really sweet. I was really surprised with that one, so I highly recommend that one. I haven't seen any of these other ones, like Skidoo and Mickadoo, Will, Succe Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, A Girl in Every Port, Double Dynamite, and Mr. Music. I haven't seen any of those. And the Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, it says that he's uncredited. Um... Harpo, it says, of course, Too Many Kisses, La Fiesta de Santa Barbara, it's Stage Door Canteen. And Chico had Papa Romani, it's a television pilot, and I think that's the one that was really bad. <laughs> but the other ones were in it too, so I would think that it would, but I'm not gonna question it. And then Zeppo had a kiss in the dark. And he had a cameo in it. Another actress was Thelma Todd. And I've talked about Thelma Todd. Um, she was Let's see, she's in Monkey Business, I believe. What other ones was she in? Oh yeah, she was in Horse Feathers. I forgot she was that girl. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so uh, Margaret Dumont, and Thelma Todd are the women that you see frequently. And basically the formula for a lot of the Marx Brothers films are you're going to hear them play music. There's going to be singing. There's going to be some kind of flavor of dancing. You're going to get satire. You're going to get slapstick. Some kind of vaudeville something. <laughs> Expect it. I would recommend if you've never seen Marx Brothers, start with Duck Soup. Um, yeah, start with that one and then just pick and choose. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they pretty much touched every form of entertainment, starting with stage, vaudeville, and Broadway, and radio, and, um, and then movies, and Groucho, I think, was the only one that really entered television, it was because of the, um, game show, and then, um, I think Harpo is the only one that actually, well, I'm sure all of them had a book of some point, at, of some kind. And yes, I do, <laughs> Carmen Miranda, that's her name. Oh, I can't believe I blanked on her name. Because... But yeah, you can find Copacabana on YouTube if they haven't taken it down, because that's where I watched it. And I, I enjoyed that one. And Night at the Opera. All the other ones I haven't really seen. But, um, yeah. Um, like I said, I talked about Marx Brothers before, and it, it must have been when I talked about 
Harpo being in Too Many Kisses. <laughs> and I figure it's, I need, I need to elaborate. <laughs> Talk about it more, because they had such an impact on entertainment industry. And um, considering that we still kind of use the Groucho mask a little bit. <laughs> we still do the glasses and the cigar and everything. But we I'm sure that a lot of people don't really know where it comes from or originates from. <laughs> if you were to say Groucho, some people would be like, who who's that? But um so Anyway, yeah, um, so yes, definitely look up those, um, those documentaries. Like I said, it's a, a PBS documentary. It was released on, I'm pretty sure it was Groucho's 100th birthday or had to be, because uh, it seems like it was something to that effect, and um, and then there's also like biography and and that, and it'll give you a lot more of an idea of like their their life in vaudeville, their life on Broadway, and you know it'll talk about the mustache and then their um like the grease paint mustache. I remember in high school, for some reason in high school, we were in my Myth and Legends class of all classes. And for some reason, we got to talking about the Marx Brothers. And we talked about how that mustache was fake. And one of the kids was like, no, it's real. And we're like, no, it isn't. <laughs> No, how can you, it's fake. <laughs> and um, my teacher was like, no, it, it it is grease paint. He probably even used tape at one time just to save time and everything. And this kid was just, he was sure that it was real. <laughs> we were going to have a brawl in the class. <laughs> But, um, anyway, and then, yeah, there was a Gummo, um, Gummo was in, <laughs> made my great-grandmother very upset that <laughs> he wasn't in the entertainment industry anymore, but, and those documentaries will explain more about that, um, I, I'm not exactly sure why he quit. But anyway, and again, I also recommend if it's on YouTube, look up some of these radio shows. I mean, they're just, they're funny. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's the Marx Brothers. 